Today we're going to go over different settings, customizations, as well as button layout on the Canon R7 regarding to focus and autofocus. These are changes that I find most useful under different circumstances where you don't have to go back into the menu and dig in to change whatever you need to do. Instead, you can change it really quickly with the press of a button and start shooting right away. And of course, everyone has different styles and habits of shooting. These are just the settings that works for me. And the changes that I made on the R7 were most likely work with the R5, R6, even the EOS R as well. And I'm simply just using the same concept and settings on my R5 to the R7. There will be minor differences, but not by much. The concept and idea behind these essentially are the same. So without further ado, let's get started. By the way, if you're thinking that this is another back button focus video, it's actually not, which we'll get into in just a minute here. So the very first setting I want to talk about is the electronic manual focus. And this is in the auto focus page page 6 I believe. Essentially what this does is that it allows you to use manual focusing with a lens that has electronic focus ring on it at any given time. So whenever my autofocus is not focusing on the subject, the thing that I'm trying to focus on, this might be a backlit scenario or when I'm taking like a reflection shot. Pretty much any kind of circumstances and situation that you can find that gives the autofocus a hard time if you will. And in this case, all we have to do is kind of half press the shutter and adjust the focus ring. This way you can have manual focus right at your fingertips right away without having to switch to autofocus or manual focus. Now the R7 does have this button switch down here with manual focus and autofocus. But I still find it faster if I just have press the shutter and start adjusting right away. Now here are two settings that I have turned on in order to assist manual focus. The first one is manual focus peaking. And you can find these two settings under autofocus page 5. Once you have manual focus peaking on, you will be able to see the place that you are focusing on. And in this case, you'll see the red highlight. You can also adjust the color to yellow or blue, I believe. So this way, you'll know exactly where your focus is on. And the second setting is the focus guide. Once you have focus guide turned on, you will see these three arrows. And when you adjust your manual focus, you'll see the arrows coming close together. Once they're on top of each other, and it'll turn green, and that's when you know you're in focus. Once you have these settings turned on, manual focus becomes a breeze and it's super fast to access right away so you don't miss the shot. The next setting I want to talk about is the touch and drag autofocus setting. Once you have this turned on, you no longer have to drag around your autofocus point with the directional dot. You can simply just touch the LCD screen and move the autofocus point with your thumb. And this is under the autofocus page. Four. So once you enable the setting, you can come down here to active touch area. Over here you have the whole panel, right, left, top, bottom, and top right. There are a whole bunch of choices here, but personally I like to keep it on the right side because I use my right eye to look through the viewfinder. So if I'm using my right thumb, on right side of the panel of the LCD screen, it's easier for me to access throughout all the points. If I'm using my right eye through the viewfinder, it's gonna be kind of hard for my left thumb. Like it's gonna get stuck with my nose at the same time. So it really depends on your personal preference. And this especially depends on which eye do you use for the viewfinder and the way you shoot, the way you hold your camera. Definitely give it a try and see which one feels better and more natural for you. It's a faster way of choosing autofocus point than moving around with the dial in my opinion. Now let's talk about the different buttons that I assigned and customized on the R7 regarding the focus. Starting with the not so obvious one, like right here in the front. This button the button right here is by default depth of field preview, which I almost never use. But essentially what it does is that the depth of field that you see in a preview is exactly what you will get for the final image. But the image doesn't necessarily get darker because the camera actually compensates for the lost light. So in a preview, you'll see a lot more noise in it. And I'm definitely off topic here right now. Let's get back to the button. So I switched the button to the start and stop tracking. This way, whenever I press the button, it'll start tracking and press again, it'll stop tracking. Whenever it's on, you'll see like a double bracket on your focus. And that's when you know it's on. Usually you'll probably see like 
two triangles around it, that's when you can use the dial to switch between maybe the left eye or right eye, or the left animal or the right animal, if you have like multiple animals in your frame. By the way, in order for you to turn on and off the subject tracking whenever you want, you'll need to disable subject tracking in the menu. Now let's talk about the back button focus, which I don't use anymore for a good reason, but you can still achieve that by changing the shutter button to just metering start. Then all your shutter button does is to take a photo, but it doesn't focus. If you want to focus, you have to press the AF on at the back over here, then press the shutter to take the photo. And like I mentioned earlier, I used to use this all the time, and I'm sure a lot of people love shooting this way as well. But ever since I switched to a mirrorless camera, we have tons of focus points to choose from, and be able to maneuver around them accurately with great results. So now I don't use back button focus anymore, but instead I use the start button right here, to one shot to servo. This way I can toggle and switch between one shot and servo with just a button right here. If you're not familiar with one shot and servo, basically one shot is where you focus once and usually you're using it for a stationary subject or something that's not moving around all the time. So you can auto focus once then recompose your shot. As for servo, the auto focus is constantly changing depending on what's in your frame. So now instead of having to go into the menu or the quick menu to change them around, all you have to do is press a button and switch between them. And you'll be able to see the change right at the bottom of the screen or inside the viewfinder. As for the AF on button at the back over here, which is usually used for back button focus, now I have it set to eye detection autofocus. And I have the eye detection disabled in the menu. Now if I run into situations where I want to focus on either the left eye or the right eye, I have set up the left arrow button to turn the eye detection on or off, but usually I just leave it off. And the reason why I don't leave it on all the time is because whenever I'm taking portraits, it's spot on, it's perfect. But there will be time where I want to take portraits of people where it detects their eye, but then I'll switch to something else, like an object. But when that happens, it'll still try to look for an eye in my frame. And oftentimes, there won't be any eye in the frame, and the camera tends to get confused that way. So having the AF on button as in eye detection autofocus, all I have to do is to just press on and hold on to the button and kind of like the back button focus method but instead we're using like eye detection this way so whenever i'm taking a portrait of someone i'll press the button and it'll focus on the eye and whenever i pan away from the person i can just focus on anything else that doesn't have an eye in which case once i let go of the button it'll switch back to spot or single point whichever one you have it on and personally i find it more versatile this way and of course you can adjust these buttons to anything else you want it doesn't have to be the on for eye detection or the star for one shot in servo. For me, it's just more intuitive this way because my thumb is already there and I'm really used to back button focus anyways. But essentially, you can switch them to anything you like. With all these settings, you don't have to go inside the menu all the time to adjust them. It's so much faster and easier when you have these customized buttons on your camera. What kind of customized button do you guys have on your camera? Leave a comment down below, I would love to know. And if you like this kind of video about the R7, definitely check out this video next. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.